right. Chief, first of all, your name and... Uh, my name is Chief Wally Weehat with Swindle Police Department. Spell your last name. Spell W-I-E-G-H-A-T. Tell me about tonight. Well, tonight was an interesting pursuit that we had. Uh, started uh, from a simple traffic stop. One of my officers observed a vehicle tra driving erratically on the northbound feeder road, uh, crossed over directly in front of the officer, almost striking a patrol car. Uh, the officer turned his merchant lights on to initiate a traffic stop. At that time, the vehicle took off. Uh, the vehicle proceeded northbound on the feeder road, turning underneath uh, Fostory Road, then proceeding southbound on US 59, getting on and off the freeway several times, zigzagging in and out of uh, traffic at high speed, and uh, ended up ex exiting the roadway at such a high speed he lost control and flipped the vehicle in the uh, service road ditch just uh, south of 2090, I'm sorry, just south of uh, Roman Forest Boulevard. Kind of more of a ditch, more of a, almost like a canal there. Yeah, it, like. it was a pretty, pretty, yeah, I, I, I think canal would probably be a better fitting word. It was uh, pretty deep. Uh, one of my officers, well, two of my officers actually were running across the ditch to uh, give it a foot pursuit before he had a chance to get away. Went about four feet underneath the water, so it was quite a bit deeper than you could tell because of the high grass. Tell me, uh, officers get up there and get him and find the mother and baby. Tell me about that. Well, it kind of, it definitely, uh, impacted the officers learning that a child was in the vehicle and that somebody would be so careless, stupid, and uh, uh, uncaring for their own child that they would jeopardize their child's safety driving at such speeds and so erratically. And how old was the child? The child's seven months old. And so fortunately it was restrained in the child restraint seat because the flip, vehicle flipped several times. It's just absolutely amazing that, uh, that somebody didn't get seriously hurt. Now driving. Killed. On the, during the pursuit, also throwing out uh, drugs and several things? Yes, along the way, uh, shortly after making one of the turns on the on the feeder road, uh, the subject's wife, uh, which turned out to be a 16-year-old juvenile, uh, was throwing narcotics out the window and uh, throw the magazine to a uh, handgun out the window. Um, we don't know where the handgun, we weren't able to locate the handgun. Uh, it may be in the four foot, five foot deep water. We're going to do another search later, see if we can locate it. But at this time, we weren't able to find any pistol. Grass pretty high, a lot of water out there, and uh, even some huh, ditches you didn't know about. It was very, very high. The grass was very high, and the water was, was very deep. Uh, the officers, uh, like I said, looked, uh, when they were running across, it looked just like grass in the dark at night. And, they hit four foot of water and uh, both of them went underneath the water with the bulletproof vest, all their equipment on and everything like that. And fortunately, we were able to come out the other side and get to the, the gentleman or uh, the driver. I don't know if I call him the gentleman or not, but uh, for, as he was trying to exit the vehicle and we were able to apprehend him and uh, we heard the, the female crying, my baby, my baby. And that's when we first knew there was a child in it. The officers immediately uh, cuffed him, left him on the ground, and went searching for the child, and found the child restrained, still restrained in the, in, in the child restraint seat. Upside down. Mm -hmm. Upside down. What about the guy? I mean, what kind of charges? And he's already he's already been had uh, warrants on him. Yeah, he already had several felony warrants out on bond. Uh, you know, it makes you wonder sometimes. Uh, I don't understand why these judges grant bonds in some of these cases. Uh, aggravated assault. Uh, with a weapon and of course he had a weapon at some point in time tonight we just weren't able to locate it uh, but his driving his, his erratic behavior his disregard for human life not you know, of his own child much less the public out there uh, this guy didn't need to be on the street he needs to be in jail he needs to be kept there and he was out of those char charges were out of Fort Bend County uh, there are three, I believe, felonies out of Fort Bend County, and then we filed felony evading. We filed charges uh, tampering with evidence on the female because she was throwing them some of the drugs out of the vehicle, which we did recover, and we're filing charges on her for felony possession of uh, controlled substance, and uh, we'll be filing charges on him, of course, for evading and child endangerment. Were they from this area, or where were they from? No, they weren't from this area. I believe they were from Fort Bend. Now, what about her? Uh, what about the child? The child's okay, uh, thank goodness, and uh, the female appears to be okay. Uh, all three of them are being checked out at the local hospital right now. And what about CPS? Any involvement there yet? There will be. We're definitely notifying CPS on that, and they're going to be involved in the investigation. What's your feeling on this? I mean, is she, 
you, you were you were off. You're sitting there listening to it, and you hear the baby. Well, I mean, when the officer screamed out, "I've got a baby!" Having to step up, what was what your gut? It's terrifying. You know, it was terrifying to the officers. I mean, it's it's something that you'd like to think uh, if they're going to evade us, they're not going to be so stupid to endanger their child. Uh, but in this case, it's always a, a traumatic thing because these officers have children. Uh, I've got children. We we hate to think that somebody would jeopardize their own child. It's just hard to believe sometimes. Hard to understand. And that was a good sized truck too. It was yeah. a one ton Ford F three fifty. It was a very big truck, and uh, which withstood the rollover. Uh, it was told, but it, it uh, took quite an impact, which which may have helped uh, all parties involved survive in this case. You ever had one like this before? Yeah, and sadly I've had many of them. I've been in this business 47 years, so uh, I've had some that come out uh, far terribly worse. And uh, this one I'm glad to say the child came out of it okay, uh, the, the young lady came out of it okay, the gentleman I hope he uh, has put away for a long, long time. What about the officer? I mean, he, all his gear. His gear's completely wet, guns, taser, oh, lights, yeah. radios, everything. Yeah, sadly all his equipment went underwater with him. His handgun, his taser, uh, two-way radio, bulletproof vest, uh, everything. He, he, he went in the water weighing one weight and come out weighing considerably more. <laughs> what about the equipment now? Is it? Uh, I think it will be salvaged. He has, has a uh, secondary uh, vest cover. He's going to have to drive the bulletproof armor out and drive the vest will have to be washed and he's going to swap that out. The handgun will have to be completely serviced. The taser will have to be completely serviced. So it'll, it'll go through a, the radio will be completely serviced. It's just, uh, it was still working. Uh, the motor radio is pretty tough. So they take a beat and keep on ticking. <laughs> All right, G. All right. Appreciate it.